Hello, welcome back to the ninth episode in the mini virtual pinball build series. My name is Lee and it's taken me to the ninth episode in the second project series to remember to tell you my name. As we approach the end of this project with all the major building work complete, this week will be a shorter than usual episode. Now that there are fewer jobs to pick from, I'm finding it more difficult to maximise the time I have available. I've been waiting on certain parts to arrive and most of them are here now. And try not to be too disappointed at the episode length. The work I did manage to complete has made a big difference to the progress of the project. Coming up this week, multiple back doors, the legs get feet, something shiny, Gus emerges momentarily, a router let down, a router let up and a full frontal cabinet striptease. The first hurdle I encountered this week was the major disappointment that my playfield monitor might be dead. I switched it on one day and it started power cycling. Oh dear. If I needed to replace the monitor with something of equal quality that would for sure delay the completion of the build by some time. Trying to not be beaten so easily I googled around for a solution and found a YouTube video of someone with exactly the same issue who fixed it by repairing a bulging capacitor in their power supply. As you can see here, I had the exact same problem. I ordered a replacement capacitor and then decided to check my power supply stash, where I found an old Sony netbook power supply that not only had the exact same power output with an incredibly long lead, but also the correct power plug. I plugged it into my playfield screen and it's been running perfectly ever since. Onto the doors. I have four doors to install, including the main access door to the back of the table section and the coin door at the front. But for now, I'm going to go for the easy ones on the back box. These won't need to be accessed in the day to day use of the machine, so they can be simply screwed in place hatches. I need a small one at the top to accommodate the exhaust cooling fan and a larger one below that to allow access to the back glass screen and the power strip. My usual method of securing doors will work here with carriage bolts and T nuts. I really must acquire an 80mm hole saw. This fan section needs to be as small as possible to allow access to the power strip. While I have the table saw out, I cut the second door to size two. These fans are salvaged from an old HP server and are really noisy. If when the project is complete, they're too noisy, I'll purchase something quieter. I first bore out a hole big enough for the carriage bolt heads with a Forstner bit so it will be below the surface of the door. The Forstner bit leaves a nice point in the centre for the smaller drill bits to follow. Drilling the bolt holes with the drill press ensures they are nice and straight. This is important as the carriage bolts will bind if the hole isn't straight enough. I first drill through the existing holes with the bolt sized bit. Then I make the holes in the mounting strip large enough for the T-nut shanks. Using a hex head bolt means I can tighten the bolts down hard, drawing the T-nuts into the wood behind. This really needs a washer as that bolt will crush into the wood. Really needs a washer. Better.
This bottom door I fixed in exactly the same way using two carriage bolts. I could put a handle on this but it's very easy to reach up under the base through the hole between the two sections and poke the door out from behind. The levelling feet arrived. It's a bit taller now which suits me and the whole table is now easier to slide around without fear of breaking a leg off. It's also still very stable. I purchased some laminated glass for the playfield from a local supplier. I won't mention the company as I wasn't entirely happy with the quality of the glass. It wasn't exactly square, which meant an afternoon grinding an edge with a diamond stone, and the ends are quite badly chipped. I could have returned it and made a fuss, but I really couldn't be bothered as none of these issues will ever be seen. My original plan was to mount aluminium new slot along the sides to hold the glass. I'd bought it ahead of time too. The thing is the U slot is 6mm and the glass is 6.4mm. So that's out the window. Ha ha ha. Instead this has led to changes elsewhere that I'm actually really pleased about. I'll be screwing this 4mm plywood to the sides to act as a rail for the glass to rest on. The back of the glass around the screen will eventually be spray black to mask the gap. So these won't ever be seen. And the good thing about these is they're easily removable to allow better access into the inside of the table. And I'm back out in the fresh air again. It's actually cold and I'm old and feeling it. Hence the very thick hoodie which is over another hoodie and over our various other clothes. In the garden today I'm attempting to manufacture something to replace the tea moulding along the sides. Spoiler, this doesn't work and I almost abandon the idea and go back to plastic trim. As I had already cut a slot into the edge of the table edge, I decided to cut a matching slot into the edge of this one inch thick oak and then use a wooden spline to fix them together. This is the same oak as the lockdown bar. I thought it would look cool having it all trimmed in the same wood, like a proper old vintage table. Watch my wedding ring. Does this signify anything? 
or am I just going off like milk? This 80 tooth blade cuts really clean but always scorches the wood, especially oak. Okay, here comes the bad bit. I'm using my homemade router table to cut the slot. I need it to be very shallow. I think I was aiming for something like five millimeters deep, but the bearing on this slot cutter that matches the T-molding slot I cut cuts down to around 10 millimeters. This is too deep for my needs. So I screw some scrap wood down to the table to act as a fence to keep the blade from cutting too deeply. This mostly worked. The blade didn't cut too deep. It didn't cut straight. It wandered off along the length of the wood. I'm not sure why, whether the bit slipped in the collet or the router depth mechanism slipped. I don't know. But having ruined quite a lot of oak on the two attempts I gave this, I bin the idea for the day. Who knows what will happen next time though. I spot a wild gus. I will approach the friendly old boy for a tickle. Oh, okay, okay, bye Gus. As the glass edge against the lockdown bar is nasty and chipped, I need to hide it. So I marked out where the glass touched the lockdown bar and set up this fence system to give my router a chance to redeem itself. I have a new mask. Scary, eh? Taking just a small amount each time, I checked it on the machine for fit. Come and take a look. You can see the chipped edge here. The slot hides it nicely. And that is that for this week. As you watch me tear down the machine, ready to start giving it coats of paint, I'll say my goodbyes and thank yous. The support I'm getting from all of you who watch all of this madness is simply amazing. And I'm so grateful for every kind message and all of the positive feedback. I've also had some great direct help from people in the Discord channel, which you can find a link in the description below. Also, a few people with questions about their own build have popped up in there, and it's been really nice to be able to help them. If you have any questions, either drop into the comments here or pop into the Discord for a chat. Or do both. I reply to everything. Not the Russian bots that often comment on my videos. They're just weird and creepy. My final goodbye is for one special viewer. My great nephew, Harrison. Also hi to his brother, Henry, and his sister, Harper. Harrison has been watching all of my videos as he's a big arcade fan. I built him and his brother this bar top in the summer and they've been getting some serious use out of it. I'm not completely sure how long it will take to get the final episode out. If that happens to be the next episode, it will take a bit longer than the normal week. So please be patient. If the next one is not the final episode, it might come at the normal time. Who knows? Anyway, see you next time. Links below. Like and subscribe.